We're joined by South Carolina, Coach Don Staley, and the student athletes Tessa Johnson and Ashlyn Watkins. Uh, Coach, <coughs> if you could please provide your opening comments, we appreciate it. I um, just want to say uh, congratulations to uh, Oregon State. Really tough um, basketball team. They're, they're young. They're going to be back in this position again, and they're probably going to get over the hump. Um, they're, they're that good on both sides of the basketball. We are extremely fortunate and, and, and lucky um, to get out of this 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 region and, and on to the Final Four. So super proud of our team for the resilience um, and the you know, taking their competitive spirits to another level to secure us an, another birth into uh, to the to the Final Four. Thank you. We'll now start with questions for the student athletes. Row two here. Hi, Howard Mendall at the Nets. Congratulations to you guys. Um, one for each of you, if I could. Uh, Tessa, if you could take me through kind of the thought process around you had this kind of tough end one finish, um, a critical moment in this one. And then Ashlyn, you know, you, got, you have a block percentage of 11. Um, it's uh, among the top in the country. Obviously, Swatkins, the nickname. I'm just wondering how much you take particular pride in being a rim protector. Um, the thought process going through my head was, I mean, my shots weren't falling as I wanted, so I needed to attack, and I mean, they called the foul, so that's really it. Um, with me, I love playing defense. I love jumping, and I just like being active on the defensive end, and I think that just get, that get, that's what gets us started on the offensive end, good defense. Thank you. Questions? Yes, right here. Deshaun from NBA Online. This question is for both student athletes. We're witnessing the growth of women basketball taking off to new heights. Can you guys talk about how good it feels to be a part of that history and watching the evolution of women's basketball take off to where it is right now? It's special. I agree because, I mean, when I was younger, like we were watching this and just being able to be here and being like role models for the younger generations, it's, it's what Ashlyn said, special. And I didn't realize that like women's basketball just started coming like being March Madness. I didn't realize that like a couple years ago. I didn't know that. Yes. Uh, Michael Vopel, ESPN.com. Tessa, could you just talk about your growth process? Um, Coach Staley has, has talked about this year, your growth process this year and how that sort of got you ready for a big moment like today leading the Gamecocks and scoring in an Elite Eight game? Um, I mean, practices, they're, I'm, <laughs> I struggle a little bit in practices, but just being able to, I mean, look past it and learn from my mistakes and having like my teammates helping me and my coaches helping me and just having a growth mindset. I think I'm struggling with my mindset a lot, so being able to grow with my mindset is the biggest piece. Before the question, I do have an announcement, folks, please. Due to a team practice, the court will be closing at 4.45 p.m., so all media will need to remove their belongings from the court area by 4.45 p.m. We apologize for the inconvenience. Back to our questions. I, Drew Wemple from the Troy Record in Saratoga, and uh, this question is for Tessa. Right here. Uh -huh. Oh, there you uh, are. You guys, I think, in that third quarter uh, were two for 15 from three, and then you hit one and Raven hits one. Can you just talk about what you know, seeing those shots start to fall meant for this team <coughs> to be able to put together that run that essentially won you the game late? To my knowledge, I believe Raven hit it first, and me and Power saying like she opened up the basket for us, and then I remember she passed it to me, and I just let it go, and then it brought momentum to the team. Holly wrote ESPN. This is for Ashlyn. What did you tell Coach Staley after the Indiana game? You promised her something. What was it, and how did you live up to it today? Um, I told her that I was going to. I have more energy. I was going to be there for my team, and I feel like I lived. I live up. I lived up to that today. Um, I was just everywhere. I wanted to be everywhere. I wanted to get. All, I wanted to get every rebound, and and I did. I almost did. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Coming back. Be right here. 
Uh, Griffin Haas, News 10 ABC here in Albany. For Tessa, just as a freshman, just talk about how special it is, that feeling of cutting down the nets and being able to have that celebration with your teammates out there. It's very special because, like I said earlier, I was the little girl dreaming of being up there, and now I am. And especially with my teammates, like my team, I love my team. I can't ask for a better team and coaches. More questions for the students? One more here. Come on up. Deshaun for MV Online. Question for both student athletes. As we finish off Women's History Month for March, I'd like to ask, who are the inspirations in your life that made you into the woman you are today? For me, I would say, um, I don't even know if this makes sense, but God, like, he, I live through Christ. He lives through me, so that's how I am who I am. Um, for me, I say my mother. She was always there for me, like in AAU. She took me to all my games, and she was just, she's my backbone. I owe it all to her. One more, folks? Yes, go ahead. Last one. Ashton, just to kind of follow up, um, you talked about how much pleasure you take, how much joy you take in shot blocking. There's obviously a legacy of bigs here who have done it from, from Aaliyah to Asia. Do you have a goal of being at or above the level they were even as rim protectors? Um, I don't really have a goal. Like, I don't have a goal like that. I just play basketball. But like, if it comes to that, then it's great to be, like, what, be on their level because they're great basketball players. Thank you to the student athletes for your time this weekend. We appreciate it. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs>
she came into South Carolina saying, I'm, I want to be one of the best or the best. But when you put it out there in front of her and she understands what that means, um, she'll start she'll start goal setting. Um, she's got a chance because she can do, she can guard on the perimeter, um, she can guard in the post. So there are more opportunities for her to block shots because of her athletic ability and her ability to play, you know, positions one through five. Dan Zakrzewski, Outkick.com. Coach, you've mentioned the Bible. Your student athletes wished everyone a happy Easter. I'm just wondering if this win had any special meaning for you, given that it came on Easter Sunday. Um, you know, I, I mean, Easter Sunday's pretty cool, um, you know, but we all know who leads, who's the reason for all seasons, and we just don't, we just don't celebrate on the on the victories. We we don't. I, I last year I, I thank God for um, even the loss because I don't want to be one-sided, you know, and to give Him the glory when it only it's only befitting um, for wins. Um, but I, I mean, last year rocked me. It rocked me. It rocked me because. Um, we had a team full of players who did all the right things, all the right things, gave us no issues for four years. Um, they were COVID babies. They missed the NCAA tournament their freshman year. They came back, went to the Final Four. Their sophomore years, we lost at a, you know, um, put back, missed put back. Um, that was devastating um, to Aaliyah Boston. And then they come back and win a national championship in 2022. And then they carry the heavy load of trying to go back to back. Um, and then it, it didn't end that way. But they gave every single thing. If you could have been around that particular group of young ladies, you want them to win. And we don't know why. And we often try to ask God why, you know, why. And, you know, today I stand here as our why. Doesn't make them feel any better about them not um, – cementing their legacy even more. Um, but I know they're, they're, they're happy, proud of this group. And they're happy, proud of South Carolina, uh, where they chose to come to school and create a legacy. So we have that culture in our program where um, I'm sure if I go back and check the tweets, a uh, Asia, Aaliyah, um, Leticia, all of them, Zaya, all of them are probably tweeting you know, how proud they are of our, of our basketball team. So. Um, you know, Easter is as significant as any other day. But he is risen. Hey, Don, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Congrats on the win. I'm sure every group you coach has an impact on who you are as a person and a coach, but you've talked a lot about the unique personality of this group. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how they've changed you as a coach. <laughs> um, I mean, this is probably the first time in my career that a team has more stamina in certain areas, like much more stamina than I could, that I could discipline them for. <laughs> um, so I've, I've learned to not fight certain battles, not core value battles, not, not the core principle of who we are and what I stand for, but just the, just the, that their identity, they're loose, they play free. Um, and it's, it's, allowed, it's allowed them to kind of police themselves and to hold each other, hold each other accountable. And so in, in one regard, I relinquish that. In the other regard, they're taking care of it. Like, but it's just different, different than I'm used to. So, it, so I give in to allowing them to be, um, they're silly selves, like they're really silly. They talk a lot about nothing, but some of that talk is holding each other accountable. They, they talk to each other like in some of the most unadulterated ways <laughs> that we got to close the door and just kind of give them their space. But they enjoy each other. That's who they are. Here and then right behind. Marvin Chambers, 4.0 Sports Media. Congratulations, uh, Coach. Uh, first and foremost, um, I, I saw you in Philly. You talk about 
women of color having, having position, getting an opportunity. Your success at South Carolina, do you think has catapulted more opportunities for women of color and men of color? Mm. <laughs> you know, every, every time, I, I, I get a lot of requests to, to recommend people for jobs. And I'm over. I tell them that. You may want me to call on your behalf, but the people that have called for it, they don't get the job. I don't even think they get the interview. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm the route. I mean, I'm not, I'm, maybe I'm not the person that uh, should be their, you know, their mouthpiece when it comes to recommendations, but I, it's not gonna prevent me from continuing to, the, to try to get them jobs. So um, I, I think, our success at South Carolina um, will raise some eyebrows to give someone else, someone else um, of color an opportunity. So um, it's just there's not a like a direct path through me, and, <laughs> and maybe I'm bad at at convincing people to give somebody an opportunity. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Coach Isabel Rodriguez with the next. Congrats on the win. Um, Obviously, you've been a great point guard, and you've coached against a lot of great point guards and coached them yourself. I'm just curious what you saw from Donovan Hunter today and what that matchup with her and, and Raven Johnson was like to coach and, and what that whole environment was like. Um, I think Donovan's going to be great. She's already, she's already great. I mean, for her to be a freshman and to, um, to, she's coming. to, to get her team in a position of one step away from going to the Final Four means that her, her future is bright. I mean, the, the entire program of Oregon State's future is bright. Um, I, I mean, they, they took us all the way to, you know, to the fourth quarter in a one or two possession game, and it was cat catapulted by Donovan and her ability to, to manage their their team and get people in the right places and to play off ball and to make us pay when um, we um, we we got we got too um, we collapsed too much in the on penetration she made us she made us pay for for that by hit, knocking down threes um, so I thought it was a good matchup between um, Raven and her I, she she put Raven I mean she got Raven in foul trouble which. You know, it, it's really hard to do because we're we're used to we're used to Raven being on the floor, and when she's not on the floor, we're not as good of a basketball team just for what Raven brings to the table on, on both sides of the basketball. Uh, Coach Griffin Haas, News Ten, ABC, uh, here in Albany. Uh, you've led your fair share of teams to the Final Four, cut down your fair share of nets. Uh, does that feeling change year to year, team to team, or does it largely stay the same? No, each time you're, you're, each time we get an opportunity to cut down some nets to go to the Final Four, it's really special because you don't know when it's going to be the last time that that you'll do it. And you know, more times than not, there are there are players on the team that didn't experience it. We had I don't know six players on this team that didn't experience cutting down the net. I think we called them all out in the locker room just a while ago. You know, Powell's one of them. Powell, I'm, I'm happy Powell gets the chance to to get to the Final Four and display her talent on on that level. Um, Tessa, uh, I mean, Ashlyn was Tessa, Malaysia, um, Sakima. Is that it? Adele, yeah. So it's like four or five of them. Um, and I, I want their experience to be as special as the very first time that we've been able to cut down the nets to go to our first Final Four. Hey, Coach, Vince Gasparini with uh, TheBigSpur.com. I was just wondering if you could speak on your relationship with uh, Camilla and her progression over the past few years. Obviously, she won Regional Most Outstanding Player, and now she's one of the best players in college basketball. So could you just speak on your relationship with her a little bit? Yeah, she got that, she got that today. I don't know where I was. Yeah, yeah she uh, got that today. She's in the, in the region. Okay, who this. else was on the team? Anybody else? Raven. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, Camilla's... Uh, maturation process has been just on an upward trajectory. 
I mean, she had to play behind, you know, a national player of the year, national defensive player of the year um, for two out of the past three years. Um, and sometimes that can put you in a position of, of playing a, a backseat. And she did it quite nicely because she's not a, she doesn't ruffle anybody's feathers. We got to actually make her be who we need her to be and who she needs to be for us and for the next level. Um, I think at times she's fought that and there's other times where she's embraced it. And that's just the journey, the process of being great and being dominant. Um, if it was all just, you know, smooth and easy, anybody could do it. So um, we're, we're able to push our buttons in ways in which produces growth. Um, and then I, it wasn't always just up. I mean, she would take one step forward, two steps back, and two steps forward, one step back. It's been a really, it's been a really good, I think it's a good process for young, especially um, young uh, post players, because uh, they, they, they take a little bit longer to, to get things going. Um, but she's had great coaches. I mean, Fred Shamil, who um, ended up going to uh, Bowling Green State University, and then Coach Boy has been, has been a rock in Camilla's life, um, on and off the court. Uh, to the point where she she trusts her. So when you can have, and it, it could be, if it's not me, it's gonna be somebody on our staff that really gets in the, you know, the crevices of who who they are. And and uh, Coach Boyer has been able to do that for us um, to allow that growth to continue to, to happen. Here and then final one with Nancy. Uh, Billy Witts with the New York Times. Uh, this year, back here in the Final Four, you're undefeated. You've done it with an entirely new starting lineup. And I'm struck by how so much of the attention is on the game here tomorrow night. And I've just, it, it feels maybe from the outside like you've got done this very quietly and a little bit under the radar. If that's, if that's the way you kind of feel about this, I'm just curious why you think that is. I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> I really do. Like, go ahead, take take the the spotlight, put it somewhere else. You know, let this team continue to to thrive in the space that they're given, and 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 hopefully at the at the end of the day, at the yeah, next week this time, I'm I'm hoping that we give a lot of people a lot to talk about. Um, but it's like that, you know. I mean, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's game. Now that we've won, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy it. Like everybody else, like probably millions and millions of people are going to tune into that game. I'm going to be one of them. I don't have a Nelson, a Nelson ratings in my house, but you can count me in um, to watch the game uh, tomorrow night. Last one. Don Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, you, your team has had a knack for going on runs anytime a team, an opponent has gotten close and kind of maybe gets hope. What allows you guys to do that? And if you're an opponent, how disheartening must that be to just see you guys just going downhill like that? Well, they had to do something to, to, to close the gap. <laughs> um, and then you respond. I mean, I mean for, for this particular year, we've responded and it, it produced wins. It's not always like that. But with this particular team, I mean, as young and inexperienced we are in certain positions, and I, when I say that is it's everybody's, you know, Camilla started a few games for us last year. Raven started maybe one or two games for us last year. And everybody else is a starter. Um, so they're, they're just trying to figure it out, and they've, they want to play for each other. They want to not disappoint each other. They hold each other accountable. Um, I mean, Ashlyn sits up here very mild-mannered and soft-spoken, but she's not when it's time for us to lock up and defend. And, you know, when they, when they went on their run in the, in the second quarter, when they were getting those threes off and making them, I mean, she was – saying things that I didn't have to say and utilize time in the timeout. I mean, it, it is that. It is 
it is them being able to lock in and execute what we need them to execute and and when it's it's not executed perfectly they figure out a way on their own to make some plays because a lot of times when you're making those runs it isn't it isn't a coach saying this, this, this it is players making plays it's, it's them giving an extra effort i mean you you saw ashlyn out there you know she was everywhere she was everywhere today out there on the floor um because she wanted to win, and, and her teammates followed her. Coach, congratulations. Thank you for your time this week, and Thank best you. of luck next week. Thank you. I, I just want to say I, I thought this region did an excellent job at hosting you know, all the teams, the hotels, the gym was very accommodating um, to us. I mean, I can only speak on us. Um, so I really appreciate it, and I hope that if you, if you uh, make a bid for it again, um, you got my vote, but again, people don't listen to me. <laughs> we do, we do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Again, reminder, media, that due to the team practice on the court at 4.45 in about 10 minutes less,